Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional equation, or should I say a functional system. We have f of x equals x cubed minus 1, and f of g of x equals x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x. And we're going to be solving for g of x. I'll be presenting two methods. We'll talk about composition of functions, how composition works, and also talk about inverse of a function. Let's get started. First method first. Now let's go ahead and talk about composition. So when you have f of g like this, it just means that replacing the x in f of x with g of x. So this could also be written as f composition g. And one thing to know about composition of functions is if you compose a function with its inverse, then you get the identity function. In other words, they cancel out. So we're going to use that fact. So I do have f of g and I have f. So from here, how do you think I can get rid of the f and come up with g? I kind of need to find f inverse and then compose these two functions. But the direction is important. So f of g and g of f are not necessarily the same thing. In other words, composition operation is not commutative. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and evaluate f inverse. I'll show you how. And then find the composition of f inverse with f of g. Obviously, it has the associated property, which means you can kind of move the parentheses around. So that this is the same thing as f inverse composition f, and then you can do the composition of that with g. Make sense? So associated property or associativity allows us to do it, and f inverse and f are basically going to cancel out, leaving us with g itself. So this is actually equivalent to g. Of course, f needs to be invertible, so on and so forth. But it is, because it's x cubed minus 1, and it's invertible. Okay, let's go ahead and find f inverse first, since f of x equals x cubed minus 1, and we're trying to evaluate f inverse of x. We want to find it in terms of x again. But first, we're going to do the following. We're going to replace, and this is a general method which can be applied to pretty much any function that's invertible. We're going to replace f of x with y first. So we're going to write this as y equals x cubed minus 1. And then we're going to solve for x. We're basically, our goal is to switch x and y, but since this is y as a function of x, we're going to write this as x as a function of y. So let's go ahead and isolate x cubed. And then to solve for x, we should cube root both sides, right? Cube root and cube root. And cube root is actually going to allow us to find a unique solution in the real numbers because uh, it's going to be one to one. So from here we get x equals the cube root of y plus 1. And guess what? What we found by solving for x. We did find from f of x equals y, if you try to solve for x, x will actually be f inverse of y. Because these are kind of like uh, input-output relationships, and uh, x and y are going to be switched, and that's going to give us the inverse function. So this is the same thing as f inverse of y. So you got to think about it. I want to find f inverse of x, so I want this to be in terms of x. Therefore, what I need to do is replace the y with x on both sides. But don't get confused. That's no longer the same x that we talked about. So they're kind of like dummy variables. We get we use them, and then we just get rid of them. So we have f inverse of y equals cube root of y plus 1. Now forget about everything we did. And now our goal is going to be to find f of f inverse of x from here, which is just a basic replacement. So f inverse is going to be cube root of x plus 1. In other words, if f cubes a number and subtracts 1, f inverse is just going to add 1 to the number to get x cubed and then cube root it, and that's going to give us the x, sort of, right? Great, so that's f inverse, and what are we going to do? Remember, f inverse composed with f of g is going to give us g. Remember that? Because f inverse and f cancels out. So this is f inverse, and we do know what f of g is, right? So our goal is going to be to compose these two functions, f inverse is 
cube root of x plus 1, and it's going to be composed with f of g, which is x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x. Remember that? Great. Now, how do you compose two functions? Well, even though we write it from left to right, actually composition is done right to left. In other words, you have to take this and replace the x on the left with what's on the right. So it's kind of like this. Replace this x with what's inside the parentheses in the second expression. So you're going to get the following. Cube root of x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x. That replaces x plus 1. And I'm hoping that you recognize this as the cube root of x plus 1 cubed, right? And this is equivalent to x plus 1. Therefore, this was g, remember? So this would be g of x, and we can basically write it as g of x equals x plus 1. So that will be the answer, okay? That will be the first method. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method, which I believe is a little nicer but you're going to let me know which one do you like better. So, again, f of x equals x cubed minus 1, and f of g of x is given as x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x, and our goal is to solve for g of x from this system, right? So here's what we're going to do. Since we do know f of x, we can actually evaluate f of g of x in a different way. How? Replace this x with g of x on both sides. Let's do it f of g of x equals g of x cubed minus 1. Easy. So even if you didn't know what f of g is, you could still write an expression for f of g. Isn't that cool? Now, here's the thing. Both of these are equal to the same thing. They're both f of g of x. So they're equal. Let's go ahead and set the right-hand sides equal to each other. So we get g of x cubed minus 1 equals x cubed x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x. And from here, our goal is going to be solved for g of x. So let's go ahead and add 1 to both sides. That's going to give us g of x cubed. Again, the right-hand side is a perfect cube, isn't it? So we can write this as x plus 1 to the third power. As you know, this is uh, this comes from Pascal's triangle, the binomial theorem 1, 3, 3, 1 are the coefficients, so on and so forth. But from here, if you cube it both sides, guess what you're going to get? You're going to get g of x as x plus 1. Make sense? So that will be the answer. Again, if you compare this to the first method, let me know which one do you th uh, think you like better. But they're pretty much the same thing, just done slightly differently. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.